94.3 The Dude is very grateful to our men and women in uniform. We're proud to recognize local members of our military by turning the spotlight on them right now in our Soldier Salute. I'm your host, Sergeant First Class Retired Don Sorensen, and on today's Soldier Salute, we're speaking with U.S. Navy veteran Brooks Herring. Brooks, tell me about yourself. Well, I'm, uh, I actually grew up in Conway, South Carolina, not uh, not too far here from Columbia. Um, I joined the Navy as soon as I graduated high school. Uh, I spent six years on active duty, deployed to the Gulf of Mexico for the Hurricane Katrina relief, deployed to Africa, and uh, deployed to Iraq. Uh, after I got out, I spent two years working as an Army civilian. Uh, I spent the entire time in Afghanistan. Uh, and then I came back and was looking for purpose. You know, searched around a few places. I actually owned a restaurant for two and a half years, Cockpit Barbecue. My dad was the master chef, and uh, I did a lot on the, the business side, what little bit I could with what little knowledge I had. And uh, then started at USC. I uh, graduated this past May from USC with a bachelor's in exercise science. And I start their physical therapy program in, uh, in August of this year and uh, plan to go on and, and practice physical therapy uh, helping disabled veterans. I'm also a musician. Uh, I started playing, uh, started really playing and writing my own music back in 2006 when I was in Iraq. I played a lot of bars and restaurants right here in the area, a lot of cover music, try and squeeze one of my own in there every now and again. But it's, uh, it's very therapeutic for me to be able to uh, uh, express you know, the way I feel through music, whether it be through a song that I write or a song that I can relate to or, or just, just singing you know, songs about anything really and, and playing guitar just really helps me out. Brooks, I think a lot of our listeners are probably familiar with the Navy from Top Gun or any of the many movies that they've made about Navy SEALs. Tell us a little bit about what you did. It's funny you mentioned those two examples because most of the time when I say Navy, they automatically think ships, and uh, most of my time was actually spent on the ground. Um, I was an armor. I was a, a weapons specialist, uh, small arms and cruiser weapons by trade. So uh, anything from your 9 millimeter pistols up to your 25 millimeter chain guns and anything in between. Um, I was an instructor. And I taught a lot on the range uh, and in the classroom on uh, weapons familiarization and uh, and uh, uh, was in a lot of the qualification. Um at the uh, toward towards the end, I was a ninety five thirty six, which is a special warfare armor, and uh, just uh, a lot of cool weapon systems uh, I got to work with, and that's what I did in, uh, in uh, on most of my deployments, and that's what I did uh, in Afghanistan for the army. Brooks, you've been a music lover and around music almost your whole life, but you didn't really start writing music until you were in Iraq. Tell me about that. Yeah, I used to listen to Elvis Presley cassettes when I was in elementary school. I've always been a huge Elvis fan and, and loved to sing along with it. I picked up the trumpet when I was in middle school and, and I played a little bit trumpet for, for years. Uh, and and I, I picked up a guitar and I took two lessons and I, and, I, and I quit. I decided that I couldn't do it and it just wasn't for me and it was too hard and I couldn't make my fingers work that way. And When I deployed to Iraq in 2006, I picked up a six string at a little pawn shop down in Texas and I shipped it to myself and it was over there waiting for me when I got there. And I started playing uh, a lot more over there and at one point it just started coming out. I just started writing. I uh, had a little bit of a history with, with some poetry but not a, not a whole lot and it just, it worked. And then since then it's... Uh, I've been playing uh, more and more as the years have gone on, and I've uh, started writing a, a lot when I was in Afghanistan, but I'm still writing. Uh, wrote a few songs uh, here recently and uh, looking to practice more of my own music. Brooks, would you play us a little piece of something that you've written? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, uh, I'll just play the chorus of, uh, one, of the, one of the songs that they've really been focusing on for the, the Big Red Barn Retreat, and that's, uh, it's called Why Me. That was beautiful, brother. Brooks, how do you get from Navy veteran to Army contractor to barbecue restaurant owner to college student? Searching. <laughs> I mean, it's it's been a weird ride. I left active duty 
on a downward spiral. I was going in the wrong direction, and uh, I was actually looking for a, a bartending job on Craigslist, and I saw an ad for a crane operator in Afghanistan. I shot the guy an email. I said, hey, I'm not a crane operator, but here's my resume, and they hired me the next day. Deploying to Afghanistan as an Army contractor really pulled me out of that downward spiral and probably saved me from God knows what. The drawdown in Afghanistan, they uh, they were shutting down the operation at my FOB, and so I went to another FOB, and then I came home, and you know that was kind of my plan B, and I, my dad and I opened up the restaurant, and that was kind of the plan C. I was like, well, I, you know, I can do this. You know, we can get this off the ground, and you know, it'll blow up, and it'll be great. And two and a half years later, I mean, that was we were we were going to shut that down, and uh, my brother had started getting on to me about not going to school, and I was just saying this, you know, there's no way I can go back to school. I'm too old. It's too far gone. It's just you know that part of my life passed me by, and. And he kept insisting that I that I go to the VA and talk to them. And so I went to the VA and the VA was like, yeah, you, know, you want to go to school? Sure. <laughs> so I took all the, the personality tests and the aptitude tests and the results came back and they said, yeah, you belong in the medical field. <laughs> and I just remember looking at her <laughs> kind of funny and just say, yeah, I, what? I, what? <laughs> so I just had to spend some time thinking about it and call it an epiphany, call it a dream. I don't know. I was just thinking about it. I've, I've always felt like that I didn't give enough. You know, I know people that have come back with missing, you know, arms and, and fingers and legs. I came back with all ten fingers and toes and in mo- in one piece for the most part. I've always wanted to give more, and so I, you know, I thought maybe you know if I am a good fit for the medical field, maybe I can go into that field and, and help other veterans. And that's kind of where I came up with the idea of becoming a physical therapist and helping veterans who have given physical sacrifices, helping them get back not just on their feet, but you know, running and you know, lifting and being happy and being and content with life and they told me to apply at USC and like once again I doubted myself I was like there's no way I'm ever going to get into USC you know every time I had a doubt the next step just happened and then I went to go start classes and again I doubted myself I was thinking there's no way I can do this I can't juggle four or five classes at one time and I aced my first semester and it's just been a ride since then. Brooks, it seems like the military likes to throw a pill at just about any problem a soldier has, whether it's 800 milligram Motrin because you broke your leg or some kind of happy pill because you're not in a good mood. But you're wanting to do something different for veterans, right? With physical therapy, exercise therapy. Tell us about that. It's it's a lot easier to treat symptoms than it is to treat actual problems. Uh, And it's a lot faster. Uh, So, you know, in the the interest of efficiency and and getting back in the fight, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's pretty easy to throw a pill at, at a problem it happens a lot you know when you when you get out as well and what what I'm hoping to do is to uh, to combine the benefits of physical therapy and and the supervision of physical therapy with strength training and create a peer counseling aspect in with that uh, to help veterans not only rehabilitate and and become stronger physically but uh, be rehabilitated and become stronger mentally at the same time a lot of us found uh, refuge if you will in the gym on deployment that was our that was our haven uh, we got big we got ripped you know it was just like the best place to to be you know when you weren't actually working was in the gym and the potential was endless and and for a lot of these guys and girls that they get injured that doesn't just mark the end of their deployment and, and possibly their career, but but also the end of that gym fellowship. And I, I want to offer that uh, to veterans, especially those uh, who have significant physical injuries that make staying in that tip top shape difficult. You know, anything that inhibits their their ability to maintain a level of physical fitness that they want to maintain. I can I can certainly see how how someone who's had their leg amputated can just can say, oh, well, I can't run anymore. Or I can't lift anymore because because I lost my leg. And, and, and how, how easy it would be for them to just, you know, be in that, that state of mind. And, and I want to be there, you know, when they come out of those doors, you know, when they've learned to walk again and they're ready to be discharged out into the world and, and just, you know, with open arms and say, OK, you're walking again. Let's get you running again. Brooks, like many vets, I'm a big fan of tattoos and stuff myself. And man, you've got a really impressive sleeve there on your left arm. And I'm sure there's a story behind that. Would you care to talk to us about it? Absolutely. Uh, my buddy Drewski Ellish uh, started on this this piece uh, back in 2012, I think it was, up in Virginia, and I've been driving back to see him ever since. Um, it's the darker side of war. It, it represents um, the loss and the anger and the hatred, and um, and so it's it's a, it's a fairly dark piece. But and down towards the end, uh, down, down on the other side of my forearm, there's there's a uh, Three soldiers, uh, three ghost soldiers, and one's in in color, and the other two are, are in black. And uh, the one in color represents me that's still here, and then the two in black are are, in, are Chad and, and Joe that that were lost. And just below that is the poppy, and 
those of us who, who know the history, we know that the poppy represents you know, the fallen soldiers. And then on the inside of my wrist, I have three headstones. And one is ACO for Anthony Chad Owens. Uh, one is JDA for Joseph David Alomar. And then there's a smaller one in the back with my initials because a piece of you dies over there and stays over there with them um, for eternity. Brooke, so many veterans find it's easy to turn to a bottle or to illegal substances, but it sounds like you've got some really great coping mechanisms. Uh, Would you have some advice that you'd care to share with a soldier or sailor out there that might be facing some demons? Absolutely. Turn to another veteran. I mean, there there is not a day that I would ever turn away another veteran who, who needed to talk. I mean, just, you know, find one of your family and, and, you know, sometimes you just need to let loose. You know, I mean, if you're going to hang out with another veteran, it, it may actually end up turning to the bottle a little bit. But <laughs> it's, yeah, you don't. It, the last thing you want to do is is to, you know, sit in your own hell with your own demons and just make it worse. Find a network. Find a fellowship, whether it's, you know, whether it's in the gym or with music or um, at the Big Red Barn retreat, working with horses, whatever it is, you know, find find an outlet, experiment with healthy things until you find an outlet. I, I won't touch the pills. I like drinking with my fellow veterans, you know, when it's appropriate and whatnot. But, you know, you got to find a healthy outlet, find something that helps you channel and helps you vent and get it out one way or another. That way it doesn't just... If you bottle it up long enough, it's it's going to blow up. Thanks for joining us in our Soldier Salute, presented by Little Pig's Barbecue. Serving Columbia since 1963 with that bodacious buffet. By Lexington Guns and Shooting Range. Veteran owned and operated. By Carolina Honda Powerhouse. Motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides with discounts for all military personnel. And Dominion Energy. We depend on...